Hello everyone and welcome to Start to Finish for Citizen Sleeper. My name is Matt Boyer. This is episode 13. Um, I feel like I haven't played this obviously in three days, so I don't really remember in this instant what I was doing. That's what this is for. My memory is we've just been dealing with mushrooms. Oh, we're past mushrooms. We're dealing with the flotilla. We're dealing with the flotilla. Oh, and we're out of, we have one stabilizer remaining. But we can get more now, we can get more, we can get more. Cause that's in here, cause we finished this. Two club heads gets me a synthesizer. We're just gonna live doing mushrooms forever. Okay, okay, mushrooms, forever, away. Oh boy, okay. Ooh, look at these dice. Look at those dice. They're so good. This is gonna take forever. Oh god. Okay. Okay. Alright. Some amount of time, then we'll get Peek back. There is a loose crowd of er, nailed all of that. There is a loose crowd around the supplies you have unloaded, and a tense mood brewing among them. You sit nearby, on the edge of the shuttle's docking tunnel, resting. Further away, crews from Ember's Song continue their lives as usual, coming and going, trading, discussing. There is a quiet efficiency to the hub, set up as a common space for the swarm of small ships from Ember Song that are part of the flotilla. Unlike Hearth or Step, there is no one capital ship for this moon's refugees, just a mass of individuals traveling in concert. We told Hearth we didn't want their scraps. The jeering voice comes out of the small crowd nearby. You turn to see a gaunt, pale man wearing the industrial work gear you have seen many of the Song ref refugees wearing. You hear me? These supplies are to help? A noble of you coming out here to help us singers. There is a rumble of anger around the crowd. We agreed to join the flotilla for joint protection. We did not agree to Ember's hearth using the flotilla to secure their control of the moons. You realize Peter is addressing the crowd as much as he is addressing you. With the cordon down, our crews are more than able to acquire what is needed from the eye, what is owed as restitution for keeping us restrained. What we need, we will take. Hmm. Uh, so, 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 Soul wants to cooperate. Soul is a farmer. Even the people of Song know that he was simply the sole survivor of Hearth's leadership. His authority means nothing. Hearth thinks they can buy us, but we remember the past. A rumble of agreement runs through the crowd. He smiles at them. Take the supplies if you wish, of course. We are not wasteful. Peter approaches you directly. The crowd tentatively moves forward, and by the time he reaches you, they are already dragging away crates and distributing the contents. I'm not one for shooting the messenger, sleeper. But we cannot concede to Hearth here. Not for a moment. I don't understand. I can see that. Peter sits beside you on the docking tunnel's lip. What was your plan, sleeper? Unload the supplies and wait for someone to start throwing them back at you? Because that's what was about to happen. 
Well, I should say, I should thank you. My pleasure. What do you think happened to the crew of this shuttle? They were chased out of this place. Why do they hate Hearth? We do not hate Hearth. We simply do not trust them. Do you know anything about Ember's Moon Sleeper? Or were you planning to wander into this flotilla totally blind? An objective outsider offering help? No, I know, I know a little. A little is the same as nothing. Yeah, you're a little helpful. I'm going to assume you know the basics. The gas giant Ember has seven moons. The three biggest are Ember Step, Ember Song, and Ember's Heart. We can cover the four sisters next session. I'm in your mentions on Twitter. Step was the first to be settled. A contract old Solheim gave to the terraformer Sabelle Systems. Oh, God, Megan's not here. She can't hear me butcher that. When they first claimed the Hillion system. That's way back when. Step was a testing ground, and like most testing grounds, it didn't turn out too well. A partial atmosphere slowly sloughing off each orbit, a dysfunctional ecosystem, and a whole load of dust-clogged settlers. The place is a miserable desert long past its best before date. So Sabelle moved to Hearth, where they redoubled their efforts. The subsurface ocean and some balmy tidal heating helped, allowing them to build a real atmosphere, a real habitable world. A fact that the typical Hearth colonist won't ever let you forget. How did Sabelle achieve such a thing, you might wonder? Well, that's where we come in. It's that same old rule of surrogacy. The one humanity built our universe around. My moon, Ember's Song, is a sulfur-soaked rock covered in volcanoes, tidally heated by its inner orbit to sweltering temperatures. Exactly the kind of crucible you need to fuel a terraforming project. Energy, industry, fuel, Song provided the raw materials for Hearth. Willingly or not. And a crucible requires people to run it, us singers, born into a flaming pit and asked to stoke it so others might live in a paradise in the making. That's what we had to endure until Solheim brought everything down. Peter rattles off this speech from memory and you wonder how many times he has delivered it. No Solheim, no contract. No contract, no Cybele. And no Cybele meant three moons suddenly independent. It was a war, sleeper. Sometimes hot, sometimes cold, and unsurprisingly, Hearth and Step came out of it better than us. Yet, they need us, sleeper, always have, and so we are the linchpin. We are the center around which the moons orbit, not swirling ember. We've resisted takeovers, sieges, and expansions, and now we'll resist this. Half the people in these ships think the flux was caused by Hearth, intentionally or otherwise, and I have to say some cycles I agree. So before you come here to hand out supplies like a good soldier, maybe educate yourself. What does that matter now? If you could just turn off your emotions, if you could just, if you could just shut down all of your ability to think about the past, things that have made you the people you are today. If you could just, if you could just, just, just turn that off. Turn that off. And use logic and reason. What does that matter now? Do you forgive crimes against yourself so easily, sleeper? Would you return to the bosom of SNARP if they sent someone to collect? Don't presume to judge us. I want you to imagine what it is like to try to live on an airless volcanic rock when every system that sustains you starts shutting down. We abandoned nothing. Some stayed, others left. But we will reclaim Ember as soon as the flux fades or ends. We've weathered worse. Thank you for the pen, Jane, but I'm delivering a speech to rile the masses. Don't you need the supplies? As I said, we will take what we need when we need it. There is no authority that we recognize here. 
I won't keep you from the docking access, sleeper. No one here has the authority for that. But watch yourself here. Try to remember that the Eye is just another in the long list of people who have tried to control us. I'm going to stop talking. Wonder what that was supposed to be. Look, we are many and we have many needs. Ships come to this docking access for repairs, for requisitions, for friendship. You can provide these as well as any singer. If you want to help, help in your own name, sleeper, not in that of Hearth. Carry that name here and you will lose all trust. Be as we are. Act in your own name alone. I placed my hand on the official sleeper touching station. Your shoulder. Now I stand. I hope I didn't just waste my time here, sleeper. And with that, he walks away, back to the shrinking crowd that is distributing the last of the supplies amongst the crews present. You watch them pass the food and water between them. No signs of conflict between the crews, just a careful distrib distribution of resources. Peter chats with a few crews, each of them casting looks in your direction, ones that reveal little about the singer's intentions. You stand. It seems the tensions on the flotilla run much deeper than you expected. This won't be easy. Can someone... What if we... Can I get into a bar fight? Ah, supplies. Would you like a ship mine? Nice. Alright, you will need spores after that. Cat, please be careful back there. Okay, we've helped Hearth. We gotta do some business in here. I will make myself useful. Great. Down to the land of the spore. Food first, food first, food first. Food first. Food? 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 Help me. I need, I need sustenance. I need, I can make my own, that's right. To the bar. The back of the bar. Great. The spores. I just need one more. I've gone too far. Come on, not failure. Perfect. Got it. Aced it. Here we go. I've brought you spores. Thrill. All right, they didn't like the fact that I just had a ship mind on me. Reasonable. As you cross the axis, looking for a shuttle to take you back to the ruined cordon, you spot Peter standing at the edge of the central hub. Something about the way he is leaning against the rail, looking down across the axis and towards the blinking lights of the flotilla beyond, makes you pause. He is completely still, his head drooping low and his shoulders hunched high. I've taken my glove off so I can better use my strangling hand. You lean on the railing a little away from Peter, leaving a gap between you. This close, you can see the blank stare in his eyes, the way his hands hang limply in front of him. He takes a minute to notice you. Sleeper. Still hanging around? Trying to be useful. He smiles a tight smile, but doesn't turn to face you. Is that a sleeper thing? Needing to be useful? It's a me thing, I don't know anything else. 
It would make sense. Tools need to be used. What's with you, man? Who invited you, sleeper? Who said you could come here? You think because the Harthers decided to name you their errand boy, we have to put up with you? We don't want you here. We don't need you. Go home, you stupid machine. A second after he shouts that final line, he collapses in on himself, staying upright, but all the energy going out of his body. He slumps back against the railing, his eyes closed once more. You wait. After a while, he speaks. I'm tired, sleeper. I'm tired of everything. I'm tired of the empty paternalism of hearth. I'm tired of the paranoid whining of the crews. I'm tired of endless cycles that look the same, smell the same, feel the same. I'm tired of running, of hiding, of fixing every shitty thing that breaks out here. His shout echoes a little in the hub, but few stop to look. He looks down at his feet. Don't take it out on me. He doesn't react. I'm going to go. Get some sleep. Good. Peter nods slowly, turning away. He raises a hand and drifts away towards the center of the hub. You turn back to the railing, not wanting to watch him go. Seeing him like this, you prefer not to stare. The traffic of the Axis rumbles on as you watch, under an endlessly shining sun. The same air recycled through all of these lungs. The same dust gathering speck by speck on the windows. You take a sharp breath, stand straight, and get moving, before the inertia of it all gets to you too. Okay, so the uh, shouting, uh, bellowing racism there, I can't really agree with, which is good. Um, a little bit of the fatigue of the same thing over and over again um, does resonate with me. We live in Washington, D.C. I'm going to talk for a moment. I'm going to talk. I, I have a microphone. Watch out for me. You've gotten this far. I think you know what's up. Washington, D.C. is a strange, liminal space. Very few people... Very few people that look and act the way that popular media depicts Washington, D.C., the corporate side of things, especially the political side of things, they don't stay here. D.C. is a place where you are working on a, most of the time, you are working on a contract or you are working as with or as an elected official. So if that official leaves, you leave too. As such, people, what are you doing back there? You're weird. As such, people don't make connections that often. Everything seems, it's fleeting, it's fast. And it doesn't often feel real. For people who are here for a while, we have been here for a while now. It does sometimes just feel like you're going through the motions. That you're walking past these same people and like it, nothing you do today is going to matter because no one cares. No one takes it seriously. No one... I don't know, I'm not articulating it very well, but something about that resonated with me with the DC side of things. Um, Setting aside the other issue about DC, which is that DC is a majority black city, but the gentrification is pushing as many of the black residents here further and further away from the city center. Um, 
to what end, I don't quite understand, but usually plans that involve pushing um, disenfranchised and otherwise marginalized people away, they don't really have to have a plan. It's just, I want to have the best possible real estate, so you have to go. What do you do when you get there? I don't know. I want to look at boats. I haven't really hit that in here yet. I don't know. Maybe that's going on in the desert planet over here in Arrakis. Anyway, let's end that cycle. Yeah, the plan is push them away. There is no if then. Four dice. That is a lot of fours. Those are reasonable. Do I have any do I have any plus twos up in here? You're a bunch of assholes. What's going on in here? Hmm, maybe. Any plus twos? Twos, 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 twos! Hey, this will get me repairs. Maybe, possibly, hopefully. Woo! Again! I don't get scrap that often from my engineering actions. <laughs> What else can I do with it? What can I do with this two? I'll I'll put it in here. Hey, neutral. I'll take it. I'll take it. Why does everybody make me go so far? Get my foods. If I don't, if I don't bone anything up. I can do this for. I can not come back for two days. I love you. I miss you. I hope you are doing well. Let us have a conversation about life, the universe, and everything. Okay, I have to go. A man is going to yell at me about the chemical composition of my skin. I'll be back later for a little more spice. I really hit that without thinking. I'm glad that was the end of my day. Hey, that's not bad. Woo! Uh... That's working. What's going on over here? Good. Got a piece of scrap. That is nice. Come on! Three out of four. Got it! Aki! I see you've been contributing. Aki stands next to you at the dust house window. You've kind of given her a dismissive voice, and you don't really remember why. I was unsure what to expect when we joined the Platilla on its voyage to the Eye, but after the journey across the system, then the quarantine, and then the flux reaching all the way out here too... Thank you. The other ships have only been interested in sending us supplies, but we grow all we need. What the dust houses need, that is the problem that concerns us. Shall we go inside? I'd love to. Um, seems only fair that after your help with the support systems, you get to see what it is that you are maintaining. The other options there, we're stupid. Don't say stupid shit. I'll do it for you, don't worry. You can be smart, I will be the idiot. It's my solemn promise to you, every viewer of this video. Aki leads you to an opening beside the window. You pass through a dark changing room. You notice Aki is sliding on an oxygen mask and visor. She looks at the swirling dust inside. Inside, it's just like Ember Step. Thin atmosphere, constant dust storms. Nothing that will bother you. The dust isn't exactly pleasant to inhale, however, so take this. You hold the mask to your face. 
She leads you through a short decan decontamination tunnel with its fizzing panels of purifying light and then through into the dust house. Immediately, the wind and the heat hits you. You feel the rough waves of dust scattering across your face and peer through the amber murk. Your feet slide on shifting piles of sand. Welcome to Step, or an emulation of it at least. The terraforming process only managed to provide a limited atmosphere around the room, around the moon, one which is slowly escaping. It's been like that since I was born, and so I got used to the idea. So did everything else that lives there. You feel something hard beneath your feet, beneath the sand, like a coil of rope. What's under the sand? This is step silk. It's one of the plants we established on step. Like any bast fiber, it can be redded and woven into clothes. I'm wearing some made from it myself. It's one of many species adapted to step since the Solheim collapse, which is why it must be preserved. It is as much a refugee as we are, and the dust houses hold hundreds of other species. This is awesome. You look at the pale, unassuming root threaded thickly through the sand. Aki watches you silently. I had enough. It'll be easier to speak outside. Aki leads you back out through the decontamination tunnel, which you have blundered for the second straight time, which blasts the dust from both of you with a burst of metallic tasting air and into the changing room. Aki hangs up both the masks, patiently awaiting your questions. What happened on Ember's step? Aki pauses, pulling her shawl around her. She looks small and pale inside its layers. Step was already a doomed world. When Solheim gave the terraforming contract to Cybele, they believed they could build an atmosphere, but the moon's erratic orbit made it impossible to maintain. By the time of the Solheim collapse, the atmosphere was already fading, and Cybele's attention was on Ember's hearth. After the collapse, Cybele fell too, its researchers scattered across the moons, and any central organization lost. Since then, my parents' generation worked tirelessly to survive, to adapt what we had to the failing moon. The steppe silk, the other adapted species, are the life's work of the steppe's colonies. Unfortunately, when we were living on the colonies, no one taught us how to put an AND in between the last two particles of a sentence! Ugh! I like this game, but that tick has been killing me. Killing me! So when the flux started to collapse our computer systems, corrode and destroy our life support and our water supply, our agriculture, we had to leave. Soon, the only traces of step will be on this ship. Aki begins to cry quietly. You are unsure what to do. Sit down. You sit on the bench beside her as she sobs. You understand why this ship, why the refugees from step are so different. Their world was already dying when the flux arrived. Ember's Step is a terraformed moon, a partial atmosphere, established colonies, agriculture, and agriculture. And yet, when the flux events started, its people had to leave. You think of the eye and the delicate system, delicate web of decaying systems it rests upon. What hope does a ruined station have against a wave that corrupts, corrodes, and collapses? Aki interrupts your thoughts as, as she rubs her eyes. Not everyone left. There wasn't room to take all the people and fill the dust houses. My parents, their friends, and many others stayed. We carry the step for them. I'm not, not saying anything to that. I wanted you to understand the importance of these dust houses, of what they contain. If the flux events continue to reach out to the eye, we need to build protections to ensure their safety. I can help. I knew it. You will be welcome on the wind's long shadow whenever you wish. 
These dust houses are already decaying. I have seen it. We had thought that they would last longer, but with that last flux event... Help us. Please. I will. When you are ready, we will begin the preparations for reinforcing the dust houses. We need to be ready for the next flux event. Aki's eyes shine with the last of her tears. I'm... I will see you soon. Aki drifts away down the corridor, leaving you alone once more at the viewing window, watching the ragged, delicate traces of the moon known as Ember Step. Look, it'd be nice to save all the people, and I'm, I'm sure that nothing I'm seeing here indicates to me that anyone was acting irresponsibly. I have never had that strong a draw or connection to any place that I have been, but I understand the people that do, and I especially understand what it's like when you don't have much. And the reason for that is what you have was taken give to other people. And so you want to protect the people around you and the place that you came from. I get that. Yeah, I get that. Is this timed? No, okay, good. Good. We got a five. What can we do with this five? What can we do with this five? Whew. Put it in there. Back to the commune. And sleep. I wonder if something happens at like a hundred cycles. That's when the world ends. The Yog arrives. Alright. Finishing this one off. Yay, scrap! Sleeper! Peter calls to you as you cross the axis. He is standing by the same railing as you saw him la at last time and he beckons you over. I've been hearing things. Don't be so nervous. I used up all my slurs last time. He rubs his hands together nervously. You wait for him to speak. You know, on song I was a teacher. He glances at you, anticipating a response. Really? Don't sound so surprised. Mechanical engineering. It's an essential subject on a moon where a single mechanical failure could mean the deaths of hundreds. The heat, the atmosphere, the radiation, all of it is hostile to us. My students knew this. Their work and their training was respected. As long as they were careful and respected Song themselves, they could have their choice of colony placements. They were always in demand. That meant I was respected, surrounded by friends and colleagues, always able to call in favors and repay them like for like. Song colonies are small and close-knit. We look after our own. When the flux events started hitting, colonies went dark overnight. We all knew what those kinds of failures meant. Like always, we lost more people than any of the other moons. Not a single one of my students left Song. Our future was cut off just like that. My future. What am I out here? What use am I? Song is a fading memory and the systems we built there are useless outside its orbit. How am I supposed to move on from here? 
He looks at you, eyes steely gray and glinting. Find someone to teach. You don't give up, do you, sleeper? You just keep going. You remind me of a student of mine, one who entered the program from one of the smaller colonies. They didn't have the advantages of some of the others, but they were stubborn. Stubborn as hell. By the end of the program, they were the most skilled of their peers. They didn't get the best assignment, maybe because they didn't spend much time making the kind of connections that would help you get there. But that didn't matter, because I knew they would make the best of anything they set themselves to do. Peter is smiling now, buoyed up a little by memory. Singers are stubborn, sleeper. We aren't going to change easily. We won't forgive easily or take help easily. But we'll hold strong. You can count on us for that. When you see Soul again, you can tell him that. You can tell him how the crews of Ember Song operate. Tell him we will resist. If that means resisting Hearth's imperialist ambitions, so be it. If it means resisting the Flux, so be it. And if it means to, as you have, help others resist those same pressures, so be it. And then tell him to leave us alone. He turns, his step lighter and heads off towards the center of the Axis's hub. Two! Oh! Dice. Dice. Alright, so if I go into, if I go into, if I go in, oh, come on, give me my, give me, give me my, give me my things. What do they do? Thank you. Engage is the thing that gets me more stuff. And I don't I don't have that currently. So engineering makes most sense. Wait no, no it doesn't. No it doesn't. No it doesn't. This is three pluses. That one's only two. Screw that. Screw that. Three. We might finish this one next next cycle. We definitely will. If we roll well, and then our re-roll also rolls well. I need to go eat. Food! Memphis, I'm back. Memphis, I completely just ran past you. Memphis, where are you? There you are. Memphis, stop moving. I know you haven't, but I'm upset about it. Great. I'll just, I'll, I'll, is this done? No. No, it is not. I'll go sleep in my box. Box cat. Hey, there's my six. Get a little more of this before we go. Hanging in there just fine with this. Sorry, Bliss. I've kind of punted you into someone else's problem. Not that your story wasn't interesting, but all this is so interconnected that I kind of want to see it through to the end. Save that. Because this is now a six. Woo! You and Aki stand side by side at the viewing window in silence. The dust swirls and you glimpse the twisted root systems of the step silk through the ochre haze. After all these cycles, you feel a strange connection to a world on which you have never set foot. Aki shifts from foot to foot. She seems restless, eager to speak but unsure of what to say. Hey, these dust houses look pretty good, huh? They do. She pauses and turns back to the window. What is the value of all this? Of preserving a world we have left behind.
Heritage. Our practices, our lives require the materials and the patterns that Step provides. But if those practices remain unchanged while the universe around them shifts, aren't they already dead? What is better, to preserve at all costs or to allow things to be destroyed by change? Aki paces away, lost in thought. I'm grateful to you for helping protect the dust houses, for ensuring their slide into decay is delayed, even averted. But now I find myself at an impasse. The stability of the dust houses changes things. It makes me aware of how blinkered we have been. Aki stops to look at you, her posture somehow different. If the ecosystems of Step, if its people cannot grow to meet the future, why preserve it? Are we just slaves to the preservation of what came before? You can change. This is a little too close to... I don't know. I don't like that line. I don't like it. We must change. We must change to live. I'm holding your hands in mine. No one has ever done this before. We are connecting on a level that transcends galaxies. I have not touched your shoulder in the last 20 minutes. I have seen that in you. The step. These people, this ship, should serve more than heritage, than history. They should serve the future. There are those in the flotilla that need clothes and need food that can benefit from the gifts of the Steps ecosystem. I want you to invite them. Can you do that for me? Of course. I know that Soul sent you. You can tell him Aki, captain of the Wind's Long Shadow, invites all the people of the flotilla to come. I will. She nods and steps away. You want to know about the Flux, no? About its purposes and its origins. You wish to protect your home as we could not. I'm afraid I don't have much to tell you. It is an exotic wave of sort, an energy that passes through matter. It shifts the very charged particles which run through our electrical systems. It is possible to shield against it, as you would radiation, as we have done with the dust houses. But only while it is weak. The flux event here was much like the first ones we felt on Ember Step. Localized, destructive but bearable. But in time, its strength grew. I don't know if it will be the same here, but... It is coming from the center of the system the close orbit of Helion Star, H1. That is all we could uncover. She is silent for a moment, unsure of what to add. I'm sorry I cannot offer more, but you are always welcome on this ship. I hope I will see you when the others come. She squeezes both your hands. I hope this ship... These dust houses can be more than a museum. I hope they can be a home. With this, she turns and leaves, and you feel that word, home, resonating within you like a struck bell. I liked that one. I liked that. That was good. When you arrive at the bridge of the Pilgrim Seed, Soul is waiting for you. You wouldn't believe the messages that have come through in the past few cycles, sleeper. The ship from Step has sent a goodwill gesture, a whole cache of supplies from their own farms. I'm not sure how we'll use them, but the gesture is a welcome one. Thong, meanwhile, are apparently accepting supplies again, although a little reticently, if I may say so. I don't expect them to change anytime soon, it should be said. And what I'm wondering, Sleeper, is what part you had in all of this. I helped where I could. I've come to expect that of you, Sleeper. He smiles. You look at Sol, his eyes bright and eager, and wonder what he sees in you. Are you a tool to be used, 
or an ally. It can be hard to tell. I want to show you something. I will steer you by the sleeper touching device, the shoulder, and you can turn to lift. He leads you along the axis of the ship, towards the engines, the clanking of his suit accompanied by the constant hammering and welding that fills the echoey bulkheads of the Pilgrim Seed at all hours. With the cord unlifted and shuttles able to go out to salvage scrap and barter for supplies, the ship has become a place of transformation, moving towards some state yet to be revealed to you. You look at Sol. What is his plan here? What is he preparing the Pilgrim Seed for? Or are his sharp eyes simply focused on making it through the next cycle? Suddenly, Sol stops in front of a huge bulkhead door, like the seal on the front of a dry dock hangar. He signals to someone in a cabin high up attached to the wall, and they begin the process of opening it up. The Pilgrim Seed was built as a short-range freight carrier, you know? The amber warning lights on the bulkhead door send spinning shadows across Sol's face. That is, oh, a, that is a sentence. I like it. We built it to ship the entire harvest from thousands of farms to the silos at Passero. When we realized we'd need to leave, it was the biggest ship we could muster. And somehow she's carried us all the way out here. We? Farmers mostly, from outside the city and the edges. We saw it coming first, I guess. Knew it was time. Others didn't want to believe. I was a farmer. Had a whole load of land and people to run it. And my people helped convert this place for the long trip. Others led, organized the evacuation, and debated the plan. What happened? Not one of those folks made it. We were out in the black a long time before we got here, sleeper. Things happen. The upshot is I was chosen to take over. I guess my, true, my crew trusted me, and I knew the ship. I argued, reminded them I'm no leader and that I'm sick, but, well, when service chooses you. A loud klaxon sounds, indicating the bulkhead doors are ready to open and reveal the metal gear inside. They groan as they slide back, the metal squeals echoing through the vast ship, bouncing off its hard-plated walls. At first, all you see is darkness. Then the lights go on in huge strips that stretch back and back as far as you can see. The space in front of you, a vast bay, bigger than any you have ever seen, is empty. When we left Hearth, we didn't have the time or resources to convert the entire ship. Sol begins leading you into the massive space. So much of the freight space we sealed away or shut down. But now we have time, we have resources, we've stabilized here at least for the moment. Now is the time we make use of all this. What are you planning? What do you think happens next for the Eye Sleeper? The flux has already hit one part of the station, and from what I know, it'll hit again. On Hearth, we lost everything. There isn't much time, Sleeper, but there is t enough time to do something. Think of the number of people we can fit on here. The farming stacks, the housing. Hell, we can plant some of those mushrooms you love so much. This is the way forward. The only way. We need to fill this ship with able bodies and head for the Starward Belt. I thought the eye was your destination? It was until the flux hit here. Now it's just another stop. I'm glad of the chance to resupply and salvage, but we need to go further out. I want you to help me. You know the eye, you have connections, and you can work hard, I've seen it. I know you are like me, sleeper. You didn't choose service, but it chose you. There are, there are other ways we can figure out what it is. If you know them, go ahead. But I'm telling you, this is the opportunity we have now. I know it's a lot to think about, Sleeper. Trust me. But think of what we can do here. The flotilla can't last forever. We need more than just farmers to make this work. We need to build a new world for ourselves. I've heard that out there in the belt, there are people who've been setting up since the collapse, making something of their own. That's our future, tucked away in those rocks, far from all this. I didn't bring my people here just to let them die somewhere new. 
Sol crosses back over the threshold of the bay and signals for the operator to close it up. The door groans, and Sol waits for it to stop. Think about it, sleeper. But don't wait too long. This is happening soon. And he leaves you there in the silence of this vast bay, your head spinning with the thought of leaving the eye. Can't leave? How would I leave? What would I do? Where would I go? I would go to the Starward Belt and the sequel. I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna work on my room. Oh. This feels useless now. I'm still doing it though. What if I fix it? What if I seal it? What if it's good? Yeah, I did it. Squatter's rights. Oh! Oh, feed, 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 feed. You buy the crackers from a shop unit downstairs and crumble them up into a tray. Something moves in the shadows. I want to, I want a pet. Oh, it's a cat. Jane, look, it's a cat. He's like you, all this is a black cat, it's like my Lucas. The stray hops up onto a work surface and looks out of the unit's small window. It doesn't acknowledge your presence, it just sits there, beside the tray of crumbled crackers, staring out at the low end. What is this cat's story? Are there more on the station? You haven't seen another in the low end, but in this vast megastructure that means little. There could be a whole colony of cats like this one down in the warren. Soul, can we take the cats? You look at its sleek, dark fur and sharp eyes. It doesn't look ragged, it looks at home. In fact, its presence in the unit makes you wonder if this is the stray's apartment in which you are squatting. Kitty? Kitty, 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 kitty? You lean forward a little and the stray tenses up. Perhaps best to give it a moment to get used to you. The stray settles a little and starts eating, picking at the broken crackers. You don't remember ever having been this close to an animal. It triggers something in you, a recognition of a life totally unlike your own, but still somehow connected, parallel, even interwoven. The stray licks crumbs from its fur. Were you, were you born here, little guy? The stray lifts its head as you speak, but looks out at the glow of the low end, not at you. The cat's comfort in this place is enough to answer your question. The stray is a born resident of the eye, like all those thousands out there beyond your window. This is, after all, a place for strays, for both those who begin their journey here and those who end it. You turn your eyes to the window, the one that the stray looks out of, and you both watch the stars and the ships together. You feel something pass between you and the stray, a kind of acknowledgement of each other, a sense that each of you might share something with the other, a point of connection. I want to form a social link with this cat. Then all at once the stray yawns wide, hops down from the unit, and brushes along your legs. And then it is gone, out through the unit door and back into the corridors of the low end. Kitty! Kitty cat! Kitty. I'm very happy about that. I don't know. Maybe you could tell. Let's take it four dice for another day. My first night in my new apartment. I have rolled terrible dice as a result. I'm gonna feed the cat again. The stray crunches up to crackers as they wa as you watch. Sometimes they'll let you stroke them. Sometimes not. 
Good cat. Good cat. Quality cat. Quality cat. All right. How much of this day can we get done? Anyone, anyone got anything for me? How's this going? Oh boy. Have you ever heard of Can Channel Sleeper? Peek asks as soon as you enter the bay as if you were in the middle of a conversation. There are heavy circles under their eyes and you aren't sure if they've moved since you last visited. The console they are working at seems to have grown too, shadowing their slight frame and a wealth of screens and wires. Uh, you mean for transit? Yes, exactly. Kiyomani's active negation, the name of the effect used to transport trillions of tons of materials from the surrogate systems to the core. You might have heard of it in your physics classes. At XPR, they hammered the principles into us as kids. And a process of collapsing spatial causality along the Euclidean distance between two points by negating mass simultaneously at both ends of a geodesic curve. Oh yeah, exactly. Essentially, CAN channels allow for the near instantaneous transport of raw materials between systems. They require huge volumes of energy, of course, and decades of construction. But once a CAN channel is established, it opens up a system for infinite exploitation. The backbone of surrogacy is what XPR called them. He shakes their head. They might not be able to send anything more complex than a rock through them. Complex machines and people are, shall we say, reconfigured by the process. But for raw, molecularly pure materials? Where is this going? What I was trying to find out was whether the Helion system, this system, ever had a CAN channel. Scan channels are vastly expensive to build or to run. Not every surrogate system has one. Many use fraction drive ships to transport their materials to the nearest hub. But Solheim, Solheim spared no expense when they established this system. No way. Yep. They shut it down before the collapse. They couldn't run the sender receiver station anymore, but it was there. It still is, as far as I can tell, closely orbiting our star. In fact, I'm sure it's there, because one of the issues with CAN channels are the massive waves of exotic energy they can produce when cycling up the flux. Exactly. Someone is starting up the channel. Who? Why? 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 That I don't know. They'd need a lot of resources to do it, and they'd need to have people from the core systems. But there's no real large-scale extraction in the Helion system anymore, so why would you go to the trouble? Just to trigger the flux? The flux, the wave the can effect produces, is a side effect, a problematic one, but it isn't a destructive force. If it was, the core systems would have never been able to use it. So then why are colonies collapsing because of it? Why is it chewing through systems? The kind of industrial system set up to function within the range of a once active CAN channel. The moons of Ember have been terraforming since before the collapse. They would have had to have deal with the flux. Yet everything we have heard from the refugees says it brought down every system they had. Pink falls quiet, thinking it all through. Your mind drifts too, thinking of the CAN channels. Those vast acausal highways that prop up the core systems and their endless appetite for resources. This system has been quiet for decades. Solheim collapsed. Most corporations gave up their claims, and apart from the Celis ships that came to, came to begin work on the sidereal horizon, no one from the core has come here in all that time. You shiver as you imagine the attention of the core, the systems of logic and exploitation that created you created your suffering, turning towards the Helion system. A floodlight turned to this dark corner. A shrill bleep catches both of your attention, and Peek rushes to a screen, one showing a crude map of the station. On it, individual markers begin to flare up with insistent chirps. 
Peek looks puzzled for a moment, and then their face drops. No, 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 this doesn't make any sense! What's happening? The fluxed nodes are appearing elsewhere on the station. I set this system to alert me to other fluxed nodes near the epicenter of the flux event, but these are everywhere! The hub, the low end, the shipyard! How can this happen? The only reason we saw flux nodes here is because it is the most rundown part of the station. They were barely shielded, but others appearing? So far after the event! You are going to need to get me the data from these nodes, and quickly. I'll keep looking at what I have here, but I need to know why they are popping up everywhere. Right now? Right. Now. We can talk more about CAN channels and systems history when you are back, but this needs our attention right now. Peek turns quickly back to the monitor, their eyes following scrolling screens of code spewing from the newly fluxed nodes. You leave quickly, but struggle to shake the image of the spotlight from your mind. You feel watched as you cross back into the Pilgrim Seed on your way back to a shuttle bay. You hurry onward, eager to outrun the fear. Ooh, baby! Okay, okay, okay. I need to stop in a minute. Okay, I need to stop in a minute. Flux them nodes. What do you need? You need a six or a five, okay. Check them all, check them all. Here's another one. Is that a five or a six? That is unhelpful. Top, top. Up top. Three. Three. Four or six. Okay. Back down. Let's grab this one. Flux it. This node is turned inside out, its skin writhing with distorted data. Nope, don't want to put that away. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, well, that ends the flux of nodes for the day. Those are bad dice. All right. We're going to have to call it there. Tomorrow. Hopefully, hopefully, the explanation for what just happened. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. I will see you all next time. Bye!